continue on with our series Equip for Battle. Uh, remember, uh, we've been on this for, this is the third week now. Uh, our first message we talked about uh, not wearing other people's armor or taking off the armor uh, of others and the opinions of others and placing on uh, God's armor in our life. Uh, in other words, it's saying that we can't follow man and what man views as religion, we have to follow the word of God and, and, and be convicted and moved by the holy scriptures and God's word to, to fashion our lives and to help us in our journey to draw closer to him, that it's going to be his armor that we could reign over the enemy. Amen. Then we talked about the belt of truth. I don't know about you, but that is one of the most essential things that the whole armor uh, is based upon. You've got to have that foundation of truth uh, in your life. You have to know the truth, and you have to be able... Uh, to live in that truth, and that is through Jesus Christ. He says he is the way, he is the truth, and he is uh, the life. And so we're so thankful that if, as long as we have that belt fastened to us and we're walking in truth, that uh, it allow us uh, uh, the truth to know the tactics of the enemy against our lives as well as it will uh, establish the rest of the armor that God has for us. And today we're going to be talking about the breastplate of righteousness. Um, I don't know about you, but this is one of the, uh, again, all of them are very important, but this is uh, one of the, the parts of the armor where it protects your chest area. Uh, how many knows that you have vital organs in your chest? You have your heart, you have your lungs. Uh, it's very important that uh, in battle that those things are covered. And today we're going to be talking about the breastplate of righteousness. And, and through that, we must understand uh, the righteousness of ourselves. The Bible puts it as we're as filthy rags. And uh, I'm so thankful that uh, God is not looking at my righteousness because my righteousness stinks. So does yours. When we look at our righteousness, there's not one among us that is righteous. But through Jesus Christ, uh, we have the righteousness of God applied to us. Aren't you thankful for that today? Read with us in Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to start again in verse 10. We're going to read it, uh, and we're just going to keep continuing, continuing as we go through. It says, the final word, be strong in the Lord and the... And in his mighty power, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. And against mighty powers in this dark world. And against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. We often hear, and when we're in Sunday school, a lot of times as children, we, uh, uh, it is probably a goal of most teachers that are uh, teaching small children to get the children to... Uh, memorize the Ten Commandments. Anybody ever, has ever had a teacher get you to memorize the Ten Commandments? And, and a lot of us probably can list the Ten Commandments as they go. And we know that it was embedded in the law of Moses, and we know how Moses received the law. And we understand that uh, in those times, that's where uh, Sadducees and Pharisees began uh, to really just focus on the law. And there's a lot of times in our life that we get so focused on that law of do's and don'ts. And this is where the Pharisees come back, that when Jesus came uh, to the earth and when Jesus began his ministry, they were bucked against it so much because uh, it was something di excuse me, different from what uh, they have been reading or the law that they have uh, studied inside and out. And I don't know about you today, but we must understand that God has given us the freedom 
uh, from the law. In Romans, it tells us that. And uh, it don't mean that we can go around this world breaking rules or anything of that fashion. But what it tells us is that Jesus came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill it so that uh, we must within ourselves rightly divide His Word and live in the spirit of what He wants us to do. It's been so much so that they even asked Jesus uh, of the law of Moses, uh, which one is the most important. And He said in Matthew chapter 22, He says uh, this in verse 36, they asked, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And then he said, A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. What he's saying here and the thing that runs through that is love. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind and that you must love your neighbor. This is what Christ brought and these are the truth that we have to walk in in our life as we begin to put the armor of God on and begin to fasten that truth and then bring on the breastplate. And, and you ask yourself <coughs> this morning why the breastplate? Well, it was used to protect our chest. It encompasses our hearts and our lungs, like I said earlier. And without these things, your body will cease to function. And a lot of times when we talk about the spiritual side of a human, we talk about the heart of a human. A lot of times we talk about what's in a man's heart. What flows, issues of life flow, the Bible says, from the heart. And so we correlate our, our, our mortal heart or our physical heart with the spiritual side of our lives as well. Call it the heart, knowing the heart of God. We, we, we use that as our heart uh, in everything that we do as a um, spiritual aspect of our life. So if it's a spiritual aspect with our soul contained in our thoughts and the way that we live our life, we know that there are good, uh, uh, good souls, those who love the Lord, and we know that there are souls that are dead and full of sin. We know that there are lives that are filled and, and we would call them someone who has a damaged heart or a cruel heart uh, towards life. <clears throat> those who do those type of things. But we must understand that just like the physical, our spiritual lives are as important. A lot of times if it's not protected, there's a lot of things that can take place from the enemy when he becomes or when he starts to attack God's children. When we look at the scripture, when we, we look at people, and we look uh, in the situations of life, and we, we look at the, the battles that we've been facing, and even for that matter, if you look uh, in the old days in war, the first thing the enemy would look at, and the, and, the, and the person that was fighting would look for those who had poorly supported breastplates, or those who didn't have them at all. Most of the time they would tell them, seek out those who do, do not have a breastplate or a shield over their chest because they are going to be the easiest kill. Because all you had to do, you didn't have to battle through the armor. You didn't have to try to fight through the armor. <clears throat> they would go around seeking those who didn't have any type of uh, breastplate and they would uh, begin to fight them and win the battle over them and then begin to fight the harder battle with those who had an armored uh, uh, chest plate. And so when we look through this, we see that the enemy is the, the very decisive. He, he, he's very cunning and he's uh, very well planned. And so it is very important for us as Christians to have the breastplate of righteousness in our lives. There's a lot of people who, who try to walk in truth, but their breastplate of righteousness is not attached. And they go around life and they're always continually getting hurt, getting discouraged. Amen. There's a lot of people who walk around who's trying to fight the good fight of faith, but they're not uh, uh, equipped with the right armor. They're not having the uh, breastplate of righteousness attached to their lives and they get wounded so easily and get hurt so easily. Most people who usually don't wear the armor are those who says, I'm never going to church again because all I do is get hurt. Or 
those who says every time I try to take two steps, it seems like I get knocked back four steps. It's those who in their life, when they come and they get through hardships and they go through hardships, it seems as though they lose the battle time and time again. It's because they don't have the breastplate of righteousness firmly attached in the armor of God to their lives. It's easy to see when we look at what the breastplate of righteousness is. See, we must understand exactly what righteousness is. We, we hear the scriptures and we hear it talked about. And we must understand that uh, righteousness first is a gift. In Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 22, it says, But now God has shown us a way to be made right with Him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. And then in Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and His gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man Jesus Christ what we must understand that is our, our righteousness as I talked about earlier is as filthy rags but when Jesus in the perfect state in right standing at the righteousness of Jesus when he came and lived on this earth he was perfect on this earth. He did not sin. He did not have sin in his life. But what he done when he died on the cross is that he took our sin and gave us his righteousness. Aren't you glad of that? He took our sin away. He took the shame and the guilt of all the sin and all the things that we uh, deal with in our life and the sin nature and the human nature uh, of this world. And He takes our sin and He takes it away from us and He gives to us the breastplate of righteousness to say, here, you can't do it on your own, but you can have my right standing with the Father. In other words, we have the same privileges as Jesus does right we have the same authority that he said that he would give us the authority and even greater authority amen that we can uh, uh, walk uh, and go through life and anything that tries to harm us that it will not come or draw nigh to us he tells us in his word that his righteousness within ourselves and that him placing his righteousness upon us that we can overtake the enemy his righteousness. See, a lot of times we think about, and I know a lot of times, and I've done it before, when I've messed up, I've dwelt on it. Have you? There's times that when I've messed up, I just let it just began, began to become a focus in my life, and it begins to just really draw me down, and all I can think about is the mistakes that I've made. It's because the breastplate of righteousness has been removed. You know, there's times in our life where we get tired and we get weary, but we must never take off the armor of God. We always should try our very best to to keep the armor of God on in our lives because if, we're, if we take it off for any moment or any second, that's when the enemy will come and take advantage of us in our Christian walk with him. There's been times where I've felt so low and i felt so unworthy. I even stand and feel unworthy today standing before you uh, and, and God behind God's pulpit. But the reality is, as, as I'm not doing this in my own accord, but I have the righteousness of God that puts me in right standing with Him that allows me to stand behind this pulpit and tell you, amen, that there is a way to victory. There is a way to overcome. And it's through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Uh, we all understand with in our lives today that uh, we, we must uh, battle and the battle is raging and the battle is strong but if we have the breastplate of righteousness firmly attached to us we will be overcomers. Why? Because we can rest assured and have faith that we're not having to fight the battle within our own strength but we're using the righteousness and the right standing of God the breastplate of righteousness that when the enemy comes and strikes a blow, amen, that it will not hurt 
harm us. It will not come nigh to us. But we can stand firm and we can strike back with the word of God and allow the enemy to be defeated and flee in the name of Jesus. The reality is we must understand what righteousness means for us. I believe there's a lot of people who go through life who allows the enemy just to continually to beat on them. Spiritually, I'm speaking. The Bible tells us that he is accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12, it goes on to say that he was accuser of the brethren. So it's his job It's his his job to accuse us and to get us to where we don't want to find. The reality is, is that we should be willing and ready to fight when we have the armor properly placed in our life. There's times in our lives where we feel overwhelmed and we feel as though we're drowning and we're underwater and we feel like we're in a place where we really don't belong or a place where it seems as though it's too great for us. It's in those times that we must understand who we serve. We must understand what righteousness means and the power of God and what God will do for His children. We must understand that He accuses us and He whispers accusations to us. Especially when we make mistakes, He goes at us and He will call us sinners. He'll call us a bad person. He'll call us undeserving. He'll call us unrighteous. He will constantly whisper our faults and our mistakes and our our failures to us until we're convinced that our prayers won't work. Till we're convinced that God is not listening or we don't have the favor of God anymore. I don't know about you, but I've been there before. That's his MO. That's the way the enemy wants to do. That's how he gets us to a point where we feel defeated and we feel as though within ourselves that we cannot do nothing. And I'm here to tell us today that within ourselves, we can't do anything. But it's through the righteousness of God and what Jesus Christ done on the cross for us that gives us the strength that when we place the breastplate of righteousness upon us, we can have the confidence and the surety that, listen, we're not fighting this battle in our own accord, but we're fighting it in the name of Jesus, the one who gave us his righteousness, his protection, his anointing, his uh, love towards us so that no matter what the enemy does, that we can stand firm in him and know that he is beside us all the way. I tell you, I I know that I'm not the only one that deals with the accusations of the devil, but we must understand we have to fight and we have to be prepared. We must declare that I am the righteousness of God. We must know that without a doubt that We have and we are the righteousness of God. We are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We must understand that it doesn't matter that we are heir to the throne of God and that we are His children and that He will move heaven and earth in order to be by our side. We must understand that the breastplate of righteousness keeps us walking in the right standing with God that when the enemy comes, we will have the blessed assurance to know that He will fight for us us, He will protect us, and He will help us overcome the enemy and all of His tactics towards us. Aren't you glad of that today? Aren't you glad that we don't have to fight this battle on our own as long as we continue to walk in truth and have God's righteousness applied to our life, the gift that He gives us? See, it's a gift, and we determine if we're going to wear it or not. We determine if we're going to receive it or not. There's times that I've got gifts that I didn't like. Have you ever been there? There's times that I've received a gift and I thought, you know what? 
I'll set it aside for another day when I need it. And then a few years, years later, while I'm cleaning out my closet or cleaning something out, I'll find that gift again. And I'll remember who gave me that gift. And I say to myself, maybe I'll use this gift today or I can use it to do this and I'll set it right where I left it. It could be another two or three years. I'll go back and it's right in the same place. See, a lot of times that's what us Christians do with the breastplate of righteousness. The gift that God has given us to overcome the enemy. Sometimes it gets too heavy. We feel like it's too complicated. Not right now. I, I, I really don't need it right now. But when I need it, I'll come back. I'll find it. I can use it. But the reality of it is, is that you must wear this breastplate of righteousness as all, at all times if you expect to be a Christian of God. You must understand that righteousness is something that just like the belt of truth, we walk in truth, we must also walk in righteousness. We always should walk in truth and right standing with God. See, a lot of times when I first started pastoring, I first started preaching, I would preach and I would be going around and I would be listening for people to tell me that I'd done a good job because I didn't want to offend nobody. It's the learning of a preacher. You want everyone to like your preaching. You want everyone to uh, tell you you do a good job. But as I began to grow in the Lord... I understood very quickly if I'm going to be in right standing with God I can't worry what everybody else thinks or what everybody else says or their opinion of me I have to walk in the righteousness of God knowing that He is the one who gave me thus saith the Lord and if I stand behind the pulpit and I speak thus saith the Lord that I have to be uh, live in that and I have to walk in that and that I can please Him and that pleasing Him is more important than what everybody else thinks. Righteousness brings us to a point that all we're concerned about is about staying in right standing. We have a lot of people who talk about from time to time again about the law and they want to debate the law and they want to uh, debate what's right and what's wrong, what's good and, and what's not so good. Where, where is the, uh, where's the, the fence at? Where can you straddle the fence at? And, and people debate those things and people began to talk about those things. But I say to them, you start seeking the uh, God, you begin to walk in truth and you get uh, at the breastplate of righteousness attached and you walk in righteousness God will begin to direct you and tell you exactly what is right and what is wrong how to walk how to live and I tell you that's what's wrong with the world today we try to walk in truth uh, but people have taken the belt of truth off people have taken the breastplate of righteousness off and so they live in a world of delusion they live in a world that as long as it satisfies them and tickles their ear they're fine but when the word begin, begins to get down to where they are and truth is revealed in their life they get offended it's because they have no desire to live in right standing with God but I'm here to tell somebody if we will buckle the truth back upon us and we will put the breastplate of righteousness back where it belongs uh, amen God will begin to direct us and change our lives and he will turn this world upside down for him if we will just walk in his statues and his ways knowing that we are overcomers through him by standing in righteousness and the righteousness Righteousness of God. I don't know about you today, but it's too important for me just to stand around and to worry about people who we offend. We show the love of God and we walk in right standing with Him and let God's Word do what God intended it to do. The Bible tells us that if, if we will begin to read the Word, it will begin to be as though it's a two-edged sword to begin to uh, divide the Word and begin to bring it in our hearts to a new revelation to get us to walk the way He wants us to walk, to talk the way He wants us to talk and to act according to His Scriptures. And I'm here to tell somebody today, amen, that you can walk 
walk in righteousness. Uh, it's just not something that you take on uh, or take off and put back on. It's something that you walk in on a daily basis. Uh, and I am so thankful that we serve a God that will uh, defeat the enemy and we can overcome the enemy by continually to keep our blessed breastplate of righteousness on us. Today, we discover within ourselves that we must, as though Timothy said, fight the good fight of faith. We have to have faith in our God. It's one thing to say, I have faith in God. It's another to walk in it. Walk in faith, knowing that He will supply your need and that He will protect us from the enemy. And when the enemy comes, the battle is over. We'll still be standing firm. Righteousness. We can't do it in our own intellect. We can't do it within ourselves. We have to walk in truth. We have to walk in the gift of righteousness that Jesus has given us through the cross. We have to stand firm knowing that all God has to do is speak the word. All He has to do is be there and be with us. And that's enough to overcome the enemy. We all know that through the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that He gave us victory over Satan. He gave us victory over the enemy. And we can walk in faith and in righteousness knowing that God is with us and that God is going to fight for us and that God is going to help us overcome anything that comes our way. We can read it today. You see it. And social media, you see it all across churches where people have come together. People who says, I'm not going to sway from the Word of God, but I'm going to walk in righteousness. I'm going to walk in truth. I'm going to walk in the presence of God. And even though the enemy comes and tries to steal, to kill, and destroy, people are victorious because they choose to walk in truth, walk in the righteousness of God with the armor applied to their life, fighting the battle, the fight of faith. Strong, not weary, but strong in God. Knowing that no matter what comes our way, it might kill us on this earth, but we have heaven to gain. It might break us down in our physical sense. It might hurt us physically. But let me tell you, spiritually, heaven will be to gain. You think of people and you hear reports of people in Afghanistan who are dying this very day because of their faith in Jesus Christ. It's those people that have the armor of God applied to them who walk in righteousness who as though the three Hebrew children says, you know what, you can throw me in this fire, but even if you do it, God will deliver me. But if He don't, He is still God. He is still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. When we walk in righteousness, we walk in the power and the anointing of God that even when we come into a room, the enemy will take notice. And the enemy will begin to shake because he knows the righteousness of God. Who better knows the righteousness of God than the devil himself? He's been up there in heaven. He understands the greatness of our God. And he knows when he senses and he feels the righteousness of God on our side. There, the Bible says, and I said it last week, there is no weapon that He can use that can overcome God that can overcome the saint of God who is walking in truth and righteousness 
Even at the end, at the death, at the cross, hell was rejoicing. They thought they won the battle. They might be people rejoicing after, about what you're going through, thinking they have won against you. My friend, today, your third day is coming. For you will rise again in truth and in righteousness of God. And God will deliver you and God will set your feet and establish your feet. And you will come out victorious in Jesus' name. If you'll just keep the armor on. If you'll just continue to walk in the belt of truth and have your breastplate of righteousness firmly attached. There is nothing the enemy can do to escape the victory you have over him. Amen. Amen. He is a God who loves us. A God who is there for us. And it's God's righteousness that makes us overcomers through Him. Let us stand this morning. Some of us may be going through some hard times. I know. I see the news. I I'm no stranger to what's going on in this world. One thing I do know is I know the creator of this world. And I know the truth and I walk in it that he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. That all he has to do is, like I said earlier, is speak the word. And this plague and this disease will be gone in an instant. All he has to do it began to move amongst the people that's in Afghanistan and salvation come to Afghanistan. And people turn from their wicked ways and accept Jesus as their personal Savior. We serve a God who has moved nations, who has delivered nations and destroyed nations. We serve a God who sits on a throne and the earth is His footstool. We serve a God who saved an old sinner like this old boy right here, who gave, us, gave me some equipment that if I will use it, that I will be victorious over the enemy. So I determined within my heart and in my mind today that I'm going to walk in truth. And I'm going to put on the breastplate of righteousness and I'm going to walk in God's righteousness. And I am going to be an overcomer of this enemy, the devil. How about you today? Let us pray. Lord, we come to you and we just thank you, God, for who you are. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have faith to know, Lord, God, that you can move mountains. God, that you can speak to the sea and cause it to calm. You can stop the wind. You can stop the rain. You can stop anything that's going on right now in our lives. Not only in this world, God, but in the spiritual aspect as well. God, that you can speak to our hearts today. And God, that you can speak peace. You can speak calmness. You can speak, Lord, joy. And you, God, can show us through faith that we are overcomers. And God, that we're so thankful that you sent your son to die to give us the gift of righteousness where he takes our sin away and he gives us his righteousness. So, Lord, that we can approach your throne boldly today, that we can stand before you and cry, Abba, Father, and we can call out to you, God, for every family member that's lost and undone, for every family member that's sick, for every family member that's going through uh, treacherous times and troublesome times, Lord, that we can stand before your throne in your presence and cry out to you, and you will listen to us, Lord. And not only will you listen to us, Lord, but you will give us the way to walk in truth and righteousness and become overcomers of any obstacle or any snare the enemy puts before us. God, I thank you, God, that despite uh, of my sinful nature, Lord, that you came and uh, you sent your son to die on the cross, Lord, that I have uh, an opportunity to know you as my Lord and Savior and have the forgiveness of my sins. Uh, God, so that I can once again walk in truth and righteousness with you. I'm so thankful today, God, that our brothers and sisters are here here today, God, who can walk in truth and righteousness to know uh, that anything the enemy is doing in their home, that anything the enemy is doing in their family or on their job, God, that you are the great I am. You are the overcomer. You are the one who will defeat the enemy at any time. And God, we give you thanks, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for that righteousness to overcome what the enemy is trying to do to us. And we just thank you, Lord, that we have the victory in Jesus' name. We have the victory. And we thank you, Lord, 
that we walk in that victory, that we walk in you, and we know, Lord, that one day very soon you're going to come and you're going to split those eastern skies and we're going to meet you face to face to hear you say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Today, God, we walk in the truth to know that you are an everlasting Father. You're Alpha. You're the Omega. You're the beginning. You're the end. You're the first. You're the last. God, that when it's all said and done, our last breath on earth will be our first breath in heaven to know that we're your child and to know that we walk in truth and your righteousness. We give you thanks today for that. We give you thanks for that and all that you do. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.